Every step you take, you're moving forward a moment in time. But what if, for every step you take backwards, you move backwards in time? I'm 11, a number that looks like two people standing next to each other. This is our last weekend before middle school. I want to go backwards, not forward. One is the person you used to be, and the other one is the person you're becoming. We'll have to go back like two months. Then we can have somewhere all over again. And the older I am, the more complicated my life gets. That can't be real. Of course it's real. He's dead? We make a pact to try and find out who he was. But this is on us. Did Daisy say something to you? You can't not look for someone who's gone. Someone is waiting for this guy to come home. Those are some tough years. It can be so hard to know what's right. You'll make it through. You remember when they used to be better to be older? Well, it doesn't seem all that great. I don't want this weekend to end. I don't want us to end. We sat at a bar in uh 2015 uh end of the tour it was at i think at the uh bowery hotel didn't you do your junket there yes and that's where we <laughs> sat this and that was uh wow seven years ago shocking wow time flies <laughs> so yeah uh well i was very pleased at the opportunity to talk to you again because I've been, I, i'm still doing this thing and it's nice to be able to bring back filmmakers like yourself, especially ones that are kind of dedicated to the spirit of what independent film is all about, you know? Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> you're the, one of those guys, man. I really appreciate you. Um, and um, I was going to say, so, so uh, I meant to take a look first before I, I, I was writing other notes here and I forgot. I just want to make sure I know the uh, premiere, the date this, the film opens. It's uh, the, uh, Friday, August 12th. Correct. You are correct, sir. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> in in theaters. In, in theaters on Friday, August 12th, and then in various streaming uh, incarnations on September 1st. Great. Well, good for you for being prepared. I guess you should. Is This is the first time in a while where you, uh, the name of the movie, by the way, Summering, we should put that right out there and make people know that. <laughs> we'll show the trailer at the beginning, so it People be kind of familiar with what the film is about to some degree. Um, this is the first time in a while, right? Since you've written, directed, and produced a film, your own film, right? You've not done all three hat, worn all three hats in a while, correct? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I with um, with the circle, um, Dave Eggers and I adapted his book uh, together. Um, wow. Um, yeah. But, yeah. This one um, yeah, is a little different. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it's your what is this number six? uh yeah i think so if you say so <laughs> I, I think i think well, so. <laughs> yeah yeah i mean i i think i've seen them uh I, I, um i was checking and i i i think i've actually have seen most if not all your films and ha, is it is it my imagination maybe it's either all or maybe with the exception of one film they've all had premieres at sundance is that possible yeah yeah i think you're right <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure you're the only, you might hold that title. I don't think anybody else has been able to do that. I could be wrong. <laughs> I don't know. Um, <laughs> I'll take your word on it. Um, well, it's, it, yeah. it's, it's impressive. I mean, um, it's the, you know, the, 
really for many, especially independent films, you know, filmmakers like yourself, I mean, that is, um, you know, such an, an enormous, um, you know, benefit, right? I mean, um, distribution, getting distribution, et cetera. It's, it's, it's just, I mean, it's never easy, but it, right, I assume, but it has to be a benefit. Yeah, I mean, for me, I mean, long before I ever went to Sundance, it existed in my mind as both a real place and sort of an abstract place, yeah. sort of like a, an, an ideal, I don't know, as far as a place that just supported independent voices or stories that were not being necessarily supported or told in mainstream sort of Hollywood. Um, it, you know, it existed as a place that I knew the Institute, you know, the writer and director's labs and the composer right. labs, they were supporting artists at different stages in their careers and nurturing stories. And then, yeah, the festival, there's always that exciting thing just, it's at the top of the year in January when there's, you know, new films that you might not see otherwise and right. some that you know that you'll be talking about for the rest of the year or for years to come. Right. Well, you're, produce, you're a producer on the film and you have producers and, you know, you time these things. You you make a point of, you know, meeting a schedule too. I mean, you know, Sundance does, it opens doors. So, but that's really remarkable. I mean, I don't know people who are watching or listening, uh, they understand what a remarkable feat, you, you know, five or six of your features uh, from the from the first one it, at Sundance, it's just something I was like looking through. And I'm like, is this possible? <laughs> anyway, well done, <laughs> sir. Well done. Oh, um, yeah. So let's talk about summering. Um, you know, it, at the core, there's four young women at the cusp of. I mean, it's a coming of age for sure. They're all four really kind of on that uh, rather emotional, chaotic cusp, right, in their lives, and then a very dramatic incident occurs um you know with these four very close friends and um you have a daughter right it's in the notes i'm not crying yeah. i'm not yeah. crying into your life here yeah you... Se several kids yeah well, and, and yeah daughter yeah amongst them oh you have several i'm sorry well yeah, talk free, about free yeah. you're a breeder i'm a breeder <laughs> I have one, not a daughter, but a child. But but talk about what was the catalyst. Um, um, your daughter. I'll start you off. You interrupt me. Your daughter, uh, is a huge fan of of storytelling. It sounds like right. She has it in her blood herself. It sounds like. But she's uh all of, uh, all these great stories. There's not really young girls represented uh in any significant way, right? That's. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I, I think someone pointed out to me recently that like my, even my thesis film in film school sort of felt sort of psychically connected to this one. That was a short film I made with about a single mother and her daughter. It was Janine Garofalo and, and a young really? actor. Okay. Yeah. And um, I mean, I think a lot of it was just, I was, I'm super tight with my sister and my mom um, and like a lot of the like movies and music and art and um, stuff that I loved as a kid came from the two of them. And, um, and yeah, I mean, there was, an actual incident that sort of inspired this, which, or at least was the root of it, which was that um, uh, a man was found near my house um, dead, an older man, and his he could not be identified. Right. Um, and he still has not been identified as far as I know. And you know, the, the idea that someone could die without being named, without the dignity of being named, felt like a, a signifier of a larger breakdown in our social contract with each other. And, um, and it was sort of a catalyst for conversations that I had with my family and friends and, and my kids about issues related to um, to 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 equity, to um, to structural violence, to the things that would lead someone to be unhoused, to toxic masculinity, to divorce, to addiction, all, all of these things that um, as we were talking about it, and I realized that just my kids operate from a different place as far as how they talk about, think about process trauma, that for them, like imagination is still a big tool that they use, the way they think about stories. It's just different. And I think that, you know, I, if, if that, if this had not, if this had occurred 10 years ago, I would not have been in conversation with young people. My wife, it's worth noting, also works at a middle school, high school. So every year there's just a new group of 11 and 12 year old kids. So there's, and she's constantly in between conversations between kids and their parents. And I think that yeah. the connections and disconnections between the way that adults think and feel and kids think and feel and and that specific age, 11 and 12, sort of just pre-adolescence. You're not a teenager. Right. You're not a kid. You might present as somewhat innocent. You might have had personal trauma that makes you seem more world-weary. But, um, you know, imagination might be your one of the great tools you use to process trauma. 
and your friendships might be the most important thing to you. Sure. And they also might be the thing you're most afraid to lose. That's a good point. Yeah. I mean, um, actually, I, I mean, I, I, my middle school is, I could relate to all of that you were discussing about middle and the characters in the film. And, you know, one of the uh, young, one of the siblings rather, you know, tells her sister is it's not Lola. It's, it's, it's a, uh, no, it's, is it, which, which girls, her uh, sister, D older, D D Dina's sister. Yeah. Yes. Dina's older sister. And she's like, you know, Oh, the, you forget everything you think is, <laughs> defines you and your friendships it's all going to be different in a matter of time because middle middle school really is it's tor it's a form of torture i don't know um feel if, like a horror film <laughs> yeah it should be brought the middle school should be brought in front of the hague or something because it's <laughs> but i you know i had that experience um also but my son interestingly enough um he had such a bad experience going into middle school. Then he just, we just got very lucky because they in Brooklyn, they opened this brand new building with a brand new faculty of young, ambitious people. And he just really got lucky with middle school. And mm. it was also in contrast to this uh, experience he had coming out of, you know, the school before. So he is definitely the exception, but, mm. you know, mostly you hear about all the, the emotional chaos that goes on, you know, yeah. and it does really, your friendships really do, uh, there's no preparation for it, really. It is a turmoil, a time of turmoil for a lot. Um, so, and, and you cast all these wonderful actors. I'm going to call them actors. They're female actors. Um, and I want to spend the rest of the time talking about Sarah Cooper because, yeah. <laughs> no, I kid. You have a wonderful cast. Please, with, like, talk about Sarah Cooper. She's amazing. I know. I'm just <laughs> like, what the, is that Sarah Cooper? Because like yourself, <laughs> she got me through, I think the first half of the pandemic. It was yeah. just like, we're living in this crazy time of fear yeah. and anxiety. And yeah. here's this woman making me smile. And you probably went down the Sarah Cooper rabbit hole many evenings, I'm guessing. And, and in my house, like in 2020, there was a lot of Sarah Cooper and a lot of like Taylor Swift, like playing my kids listening to folklore. <laughs> it was like a lot of that helping us get through an unprecedented mm -hmm. time where mm -hmm. my younger kids didn't want us to leave the house to get groceries because in their words, we don't want you to breathe bad air and die, which feels like something would say in a bad 1970s sci-fi movie, but it's, right. it became a reality. How did you get her? What was the circumstances of this casting? Because we all knew she was going, she got a major representation after doing, you know, we've all seen her. She would do all this faint lip syncing of, of Trump. And it was just this incredible thing she got hold of and figured out whether consciously or otherwise. And it just like became this viral sensation about two, three years ago. And now we knew she was going to be uh, in everywhere, but she hasn't actually, she hasn't. I mean, she, she's obviously being very careful about what she chooses. So this is an enormous thing that she, she's in your film. Yeah. I mean, you know, we started, I mean, I, the casting, you know, started with conversations with my partner, Jen Dana on it about sort of the roles and the kids and sort of her reflecting on her own relationships with her friends when she was a kid. And then bringing um, my longtime casting director, A.V. Kaufman, into the conversations in yeah. hearing her perspective. Very well-known uh, yeah. casting director. And her take on these kids and her perspective as a mother. And sort of we started by trying to create a, a group of young friends who we were excited to watch, whose imaginations we loved seeing. And that, again, when you're that age, like your friends are friends by geographic proximity and then some choice, but they're the people that are zoned into your school, you know? Right, um, right. And, and, but you have to believe that they have, it, even if they've only known each other five years, that's like half their life. Almost. Oh my God, so, yeah, right. And, and, and they're also, you're at a stage where you're choosing your own friends. Uh, just, I mean, they may be, you know, they're presented to you that like circumstantially, like you just said, but, you know, it's past the period where your parents friends you know the parents and their friends kind of put you together with kids or yeah and it's an in-between right because it's right. like because then when you're in high school you may or may not be friends with those kids you're friends with in elementary school absolutely like, there'll, be, there'll be even more choice and then more choice and then more choice and um yeah after we cast those kids it was um who are uh, you know our young actors who are amazing it was a conversation about who would credibly who would be great as their parents and some of the actors I knew before, like Megan Mullally, who had been in Smash and Lake Bell, I was a fan of. Sarah Cooper was just an idea that I had. I was just like, I loved her on TikTok. I was like, oh my gosh, she would be so, so great as an eyes. Um, Mom, she's brilliant. Parna. Yeah. And um, and she was into the idea. That's, it was as simple 
as that, just being a super fan of hers. She's a genius. Yeah, well, she's great. And um, um, everybody is really great. You're a good director. Um, um, summering, it opens again August 12th, you said? August no. 12th. Oh, yeah. Friday, August 12th, which is uh, Friday. 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 For, what are you doing talking to me? You should. No. You, you have to have more things to do than this. <laughs> uh, so how how do you see can i ask like, let me ask a kind of an abstract question though because you know you're now at a point in your career where you've got to be taking uh assessment um where you've been and where you're going as a filmmaker do you have some sort of um i feeling about a sense of who you are as a filmmaker or what you'd like to be i mean do these things occupy you or are you just too busy <laughs> um i i i I try to not, I mean, I'm neurotic, um, I mean, but I, but I try to not, I try to just dive headfirst into stories that I'm excited about and, mm -hmm. and be a good parent and good partner to my wife. Um, but I mean, I genuinely just operate from a place of, you know, pursuing the stories that I, I really love and trying to develop them as films. And in the case of like TV, like I'm just finishing a, a new, um, TV series right now that I've been working on. It's one where I deeply connected to it. And I'm just, um, yeah, I think trying to make things that feel relevant and that are meaningful and that I, and that the hopes and fears and problems of the characters are ones that I can deeply relate to. So you, so you, you, you created uh, the last, you did the last season of Better Call Saul. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> I, I wish. No, I mean, no. What is your, what, <laughs> what's your series? Um, the series that um, we're just wrapping right now, it's a new series for Apple that I'm um, an EP on and directed a handful of the episodes. Um, we're on the last episode now. Um, it's called Shrinking. Um, it's from the folks that made Ted Lasso, and it's about oh. therapists in Pasadena. And it's um, Jason Siegel, Jessica Shrinking. Williams, Harrison Ford, and a bunch of other awesome actors. And it's funny and sad, and um, I hope folks, folks love it. I don't know. You'll be able to see it next year. Oh, I look forward to it. Yeah. Um, well, it's really great to to talk to you again. And um, the name of the movie is called Summering. And I want to just to make sure I get these actors' names while we're talking because um, I was hoping I'd see my list of all the actors' names. We'll put, we'll, they'll be in the, hit, just name all the girls. Do that because I feel Leah like Barnett. I've shortchanged short the, I, I don't <laughs> feel like I've given them enough attention. Yeah, no, there's um, Leah Barnett, there's Madeline Mills, there's Eden Grace Redfield and Sanai Victoria. There's also uh, Lake Bell and Sarah Cooper and Ma Megan, Megan Mullally and Ashley Medegway. Yeah. Uh, yeah, stellar cast of women. You know, you've kind of proven men are not necessarily, they're just not that essential anymore. I mean, you know, you, you can just, um, well, people should see the film and they'll understand why you went in this direction. It makes a lot of sense. And well, thank you. You know, um, congratulations. Thank you um, very much. Yeah, you're welcome. All right. Well, <laughs> good to be seeing you. Yeah, great to see you. I'll I'll, I'll see you at the bar at the Bowery again. Um, oh yeah, today I I no longer live in the city, but I will come down there just to see you. All right, you sounds good. Or I'll meet you in Brooklyn. <laughs> All right, sounds good. All right, sounds good. Thanks. All right, man. Bye bye.